<laughs> Good morning, beloved. Thank you for joining us this morning in Sunday Festival. I'm getting all choked up about the message today. <laughs> uh, we just want to, I want to tell you guys a couple of things but as we get started this morning. Um, we have been doing this message now for, this is the fifth week, and I trust the Father that next Sunday we will complete the whole, this documentary on dividing asunder of soul and spirit. <laughs> dividing of soul and spirit. Uh, the Father and I had a great talk this week. He, I talked to him, I complained to him, and uh, he gave me his input. And I said, yes, sir. Uh, back in 2013, uh, he revealed the de- de- <laughs> desensitization to the person of Christ. And we talked about that. I was telling the gym this morning. Uh, Pete told me year, several years ago that he heard the desensitization to the person of Christ is what drew him to, that to draw him. And during that time, I, I got tired of every Sunday explaining desensitization. Now, we talked about desensitization to the person of Christ and religion, Desens- desensitization to the person sensitization to the person of Christ and the Christ life. I mean, if you go back and look at any, I think it's all on YouTube. At any of those things, if you go back and look at any of those things, uh, you will find uh, it was all about desensitization. So I got, I got kind of tired of explaining desensitization. My mic is not working. Uh, I am. I'm. It's on. Okay. <laughs> I will sit it down here. I won't shake. Jim said I need to stop shaking. So I, I really got tired of explaining desensitization to the person of Christ. Now, you must understand, over the years I've been talking about and teaching things in the in Christ tradition for a long time. And it was a time when I wanted to, I wanted to, in, in, <laughs> For lack of a better word, I wanted to impact people when I spoke. And so out of Revelation, and when I first got started, I did that. That Everything came out of my mouth. People would just tell me, man, that was really good. So, and I really got used to that kind of stuff. But the Father told me over the course of time, people were looking to be entertained. And I've said this before, and I'm going to say it again to you today. I'm not here to entertain you. I'm not here to give you something that's going to wow you and make you go, oh, wow, that's great. That's not who I am. That's not what I'm about. That's not what the Father sent me to do. <clears throat> and so <laughs> I got kind of, uh, he and I had a good conversation this week. I said, you know, this is good stuff, but, but how, I mean, how long do you want me to go with this? And because how long do how long you want to let this last? He said, as long as it takes. <laughs> you know that's not what I want to hear. I wanted something definite. I wanted to be able to say, hey, this is what I want you to do, and it's going to be done here. This is not the way it happened. <clears throat> and I, pray, I trust you that are listening to me today, here on YouTube or here in person, that you understand what I'm about to say. I, I'm, I'm just not here to entertain people. That's something that the Father is doing. You, if you've been listening and fellowshipping with us, you are part of something that God is doing today. It has nothing to do with anything else that's going on in the world today. It had nothing to do with Israel. It had nothing to do with politics. It had nothing to do with religion. It had nothing to do with most of the things you see. This is a move of God. I don't say that enough. I probably should say it more, but I'm not going to. I just, it's, 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 it's kind of outside of my reach right now. I can't step into that as much as the Father is showing it. But you're a part of that, whoever you are. If you listen to this and you don't, you don't know, you only see us on YouTube, that's fine. Those of you who see us on Zoom and, and, play, and, 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 and participate. But let me say this to you. If you've been listening and you've been following and the things that you're doing on a daily basis is the same as it was a year ago or two years ago or five years ago or six years ago, and you're still living the same thing, this is just entertainment for you. And that disappoints me to, to a certain degree because you're you going to make the decision you want. That's not my, that's not my decision. That's yours. 
But I hear people say sometimes, oh, I heard that before. I had a great conversation this week with the good brothers and sisters overseas. This, this past, I talked to them for an hour and a half. I've talked to a lot of people on a daily basis over this message. And some are struggling. I like the struggles. Believe me, if you're emailing me and you are texting me and you have these struggles, I love people who are struggling because they're struggling with what it is they're trying to live out what it is they're learning. I love that. So don't, don't stop sending emails. <laughs> Sometimes I'm a little slow at responding to emails. Uh, don't stop the conversations. Don't stop the phone calls. Keep that going. But guys, when you tell me you got it, it's yours. I'm good. So I want to encourage you. Thank you, brother. I want to encourage you. Think about it. As Paul said in 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5, examine yourselves to see whether you're in the faith. If Jesus Christ is not in you, you are castaways. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna transliterate that. Examine yourselves. Examine your identity spiritually. Unless you're the Son of God, unless you see yourself as the Son of God spiritually, your daily living is no different than it was from the day those words were given to you. Do you go to bed and you wake up the same way as you did before? Is there a struggle going on with you? Are you, if you're an extrovert, are you being the same? Are you an introvert? Are you being the same? Whatever those selfish things are, This message impacts you based on your willingness to receive, to become another person spiritually. So I'm not here to entertain you. Love you. Going to fellowship with you as long as you want. You, you walk away. Like they, I see it like they did Jesus and Paul. They turned their back on Jesus when he said something they didn't like. Eat my flesh and drink my blood. And we ain't got nothing to do with that boy. He talking, he talking cannibal. He, they left him. And Jesus looked at the faithful and he said, Will you leave me also? Peter said, no, Lord, where do we go? My words are spirit and they are life for the flesh profit is nothing. That's what Jesus said to them. He didn't chase them ones that, that left. I'm not either. But I'm not here to entertain you guys. You are part of something bigger than what we can see, that you can see today. You're bigger than, you're part of something that is amazing. But you go to bed and you wake up the same way every day. And the thing we cut five weeks of this. This is week number five. Week number five. Dividing asunder between soul and spirit. Am I tired of it? Man, so bad I want to say yes, but I can't. I can't because I'm not. Does it pull on me? Yes, it does. Don't want to do something else? Yes, I do. But every night I go to bed as a son of God, laying next to my wife, I wake up the son of God the next day, living in a body called David Kennebrew. Sometimes I don't know what to do with the body that I, I live in. But I do know that I'll never be anybody else but the Son of God because I'm fixed. I'm fixed. I don't struggle with that. I don't struggle with doing something with it. I had a good conversation the other day with uh, Mark and Nicole in Australia. I'm not trying to do something with the Son. I'm learning to li really just live as the Son. So, please pray for me if you got offended. Pray for me. If you didn't get offended, pray for me. With that said, thank you for this time of just unwinding. I don't vent. I'm just unwinding here. The magnitude of the move of God that we're a part of today, you are, is amazing. It's just amazing, guys. Let the struggle happen. Don't go to bed tonight the same way as you've always been. Don't wake up to w tomorrow morning as you've always been the person you uh, do the same patterns of living 
last two years, last three years, last six months, last five months. Don't be Catherine. Don't be Catherine or Katie Smitherman that you've been in, in your mind, soul, mind. We've been discussing things that most people do not understand or can even have even heard. We're discussing things that most people in church do not hear. They're stuck in politics and religion. I'm amazed at this. Do I want it to go out further? <laughs> yeah, I do. But I know that's not my job. We got a Father, we got the Holy Spirit, and they're going to work it out for us. Anyway, thank you, guys. Pray for me. So, with that said, I'm going to expedite that maybe I should just start at the conclusion. <laughs> this morning, we're going to start at the conclusion <laughs> and call it good. That's what I like to do. <laughs> start at the conclusion, start at good, but we're not going to do that. But I'm going to make, I've got a lot of verses that I'm going to bypass because I've used up this time this morning. Uh, uh, for those of you who want the notes uh, uh, that's on uh, the, the Walk on the Pier, I will send you the Walk on the Pier video today and the notes. If, you, if you're listening and you want the notes, just email us or go to the website. Jim's got a, we got a link there that you can email us, and I'll be glad to send you any of the notes we have. So let's please start. Hebrews 4.12, for the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. This week, we will continue with our documentary, The Dividing of Soul and Spirit. Last week, we looked at the spirit of man. There is quite a lot to learn concerning this third part of tripartite man. There are things we learned about the Trinity and spirit of God um, and the Father who... No, which no other part of human makeup can reveal. As we have stated previously, God gave humankind his own special and unique spirit. The spirit of man has powers, which no other creature created by God was given. And it is because of these powers man is feared, hated, and loved. But God didn't turn this spirit over to man permanently. The spirit of man is his for a season of time. This is one of the limitations which God placed with the spirit he has provided for man. Let's review some of the other limitations. The spirit of man is time sensitive to each person. It's not yours forever. Let's pause. Let's go. Let's, let's, look, let's go over this together. Thank you, sweetie. We're going to go over this together. <clears throat> the spirit of man <clears throat> is time sensitive. Most of you, I think you might know what that means. Jimmy, you might know what that means. Uh, Curtis and Jenny and uh, Monica Lopez, uh, 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 Cheryl, I see you, and, and, and Brenda. Most of you, Pete, uh, uh, most of you might know this, what, what that means already, but for those of you who are watching us and you haven't seen it before, and you watch, maybe you watch this on YouTube, the spirit of man is time sensitive, which means you only have, God only gave the spirit of man to man for a specific period of time. Now, last week I joked about this, and what I'm, uh, let's say, look on the bottom of your feet, there's an expiration date on the box you live in. If you look on a bottle of uh, pills, you look at the bottom of it, it has an expiration date. Every human being has an expiration date. That expiration date has to do with the spirit of man or the human spirit, whichever way you want to say it. But the spirit of man, the spirit you have, is time sensitive. Now, there's a caveat to that, which is salvation, but. Every human being has a human spirit that's called the spirit of man, and it's time since it's only going to be with you a certain amount of time. James, uh, James 2.26 says that. We, we've got that later on in the, in the message today, and we'll, we'll, we'll look at that. It is not yours forever. The spirit of man is not yours forever. And, and even in salvation, the spirit of man is not yours forever. But maybe I'll get to that in a second. Do you understand what I mean by that? It's not yours forever, of course. When God puts his spirit in you, the spirit of Christ and the spirit of man become a new spirit. It's no longer the spirit of man. It becomes the spirit of the son. Just like an ovum doesn't stay an ovum and a sperm doesn't stay a sperm together. 
they become one and a new person comes out. That's what this, that's what this means. Go to the next one, please, babe. The spirit of man can only receive or be entered by the spirit of God himself. This means Satan or any other spirit cannot enter the spirit of man. Nothing can take up residence within it. Okay, that's pretty simple. Uh, in religion, we got the devil doing everything. Even, I mean, good religion, good Baptist religion, good uh, uh, Pentecostal religion, good uh, evangelical religion, all of it is the same thing. They don't understand what God has done. They don't understand Genesis 2-7, much less Genesis 1, 26 and 27. They don't understand that. It can't. They can't understand it because it's spiritually discerned. So what we're saying here is what the God has made the spirit of man subject only to his spirit. Nothing can get in. Nothing can enter the spirit of man except the spirit of God. Let me give you an example. You, we've talked about this. You guys know this. The human ovum. The female ovum cannot be entered by any other male seed other than what? A human, a human sperm of its own kind, which I will get to later on in the, in, the, in the message. It has to be of its own kind. Well, since the human spirit is not is from God and it's on loan to us, it's his spirit, so it only receives the seed of its own kind. No, Satan cannot enter the spirit of man. Demons cannot enter the spirit of man. And for those of you talking about thinking right now, what about demon possession? That has nothing to do with the spirit of man. It has to do with the soul of man, but it has nothing to do with the spirit of man. Okay, let's go ahead on. The spirit of man was not created by God and is from himself. Okay, I'm simply saying in this, as you, some of you might know, for those you don't, the spirit of man was not created. The body was created and the soul was created, but not the spirit of man, because it is from God himself. It is from God. It is from him. It's a part of him. It's, not, it's a part of him that he made available for us so that we could have access, or so that he could have access to us and we could have access to him, but it is not created. It is there. That's why we we'll get to the verses here in a few minutes. A Curtis introduced me to this verse Three years ago, in, 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 in Ecclesiastes 3.17. But anyway, the next one. It was in the spirit of man that con uh, contraception is established. Of course, this is spiritual, not biological. We'll take a closer look at this later. It is not within the spirit of man where original identity is located. Okay, let me, let me pause. I hope you, and I said uh, Ecclesiastes 3.17. Ecclesiastes 12, 7. I'm, I don't know why I said that, but Ecclesiastes 12, 7, which we'll look at in a minute. Um, it was not within man. Uh, what, 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 where were you reading that? Uh, it's not within the spirit of man where original identity is located. Okay, yes, yes. Uh, original identity is not lo located in the spirit, in the spirit of man. That, that's not where our original identity is located in the soul of man. Body and soul are one. And, and I'm going to say this again. I said this last week, and I want to just kind of reemphasize it because I'm amazed at how this works. I've not seen it this way in my entire life. I've had three kids, biologically, from babies. Had two more by marriage. But I want to tell you, <laughs> not like Jim and Sylvia. we got 17 of them. <laughs> to watch my grandson right now at five months old, I see him, even before he's five, he is aware of himself, but he is not aware of his body. And he, I, I look at this boy, looking at his hands, trying to get his hands to do stuff. He's becoming one with the body he's in. Pretty soon when that happens, he and his body are going to be one person to him. But think about that. Think about that spiritually. What we're hearing today about who we are in Christ as a son of God, we're feeling around trying to become we're trying to become one. We're trying to fit, just like we were at, at the beginning when we were infants. We're trying to fit into the body and make it become one. We're trying to fit into this body all over again. We're really not. We're trying to fit into who we are spiritually and begin to live out of the body that 
doesn't fit us anymore. But anyway, that's another story. Let's go. Thank you, babe. The spirit of man is only in union with the soul of man mm -hmm. and not the life a person lives. The spirit of man provides life to the, both body and soul. It is life to the soul of man directly and life to the body indirectly through the soul. Okay, let me, let me, uh, I'm, 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 I'm going to I'm use this verse twice today. I'm going to use it right now. This, this part of the spirit of man is something I had not seen before until this past week. I, I've read this verse for years. Some of you read this verse for years. You've been taught it in, in Sunday school. You've been taught it in class. Simple verse, but we've misunderstood this verse because we've We've heard it in the context of something religious. Now, let me read this again. The spirit of man provides life to the body and soul. It is life to the soul of man directly. Why is it directly? Because when he breathed into the, he breathed into the uh, nostrils of man the breath of life, and man became a living soul. Now, we have been taught that that breath is what happens in the lungs. That is not what it's saying. It means he breathed the spirit into the soul, and the soul and, 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 uh, and the spirit made the body alive, and the body took its first breath. It's like a baby come out of the womb. It takes that breath. That breath comes from soul activation. I'm just using it as an example with the baby, but that's what happened in Genesis 2-7. But it says here, at least what I'm saying here, and the life of the body indirectly through the soul. That's a verse. Uh, and, 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 and I'm not going to ask Jim to go there. I'm, I want you to just stick with me. It's in uh, James 2.26 where it says, you read this verse, it says this. Uh, I've got it written here. For as the body without the spirit is dead, so, for, so faith without works is dead. Now, we've read that verse for years, and we've taken that verse based on works and faith. We, you, the, the first part of that verse is just kind of, uh, James was just saying that to give us an example. Maybe he was. I, I don't know what James meant when he said that. He was on to something because he was talking about faith and works in that whole chapter, chapter uh, verse, chapter 2. But he says here, <clears throat> for the body without the spirit is dead. Why would he say that? Did he know what he was saying? I don't know if he knew what he was saying because he was heading on to the next thing, which was faith without works is dead. But let me say this. The body without the spirit. Well, why, why would it be without the spirit? Because the soul is ongoing. You're not dead until God, which we'll get to in a second, the verse, uh, I think Curtis, I said it a minute ago, Curtis brought that up a few years ago when he brought up Ecclesiastes 12.7. <clears throat> the body goes back to the ground from which it came, and the spirit goes back to God which gave it. What does that leave? The soul is ongoing. So our bodies are really kept alive indirectly by the Spirit. Indirectly. It's going to be, it, no matter what happens, it's all going, everyone's physical body in this time frame, in third dimension, will go back to the ground. It, 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 it was a done deal before we were created, but God let us know that in, in, in Genesis chapter 3 when he told that to Adam. I think it's 319 <coughs> that he made that statement. You go back to the dust from which you came. But in this verse, it tells us, that's what, so that's what I'm saying in, this, in that little note that Catherine just read, that the, the, the body is kept alive by the spirit indirectly. It, it, it's the soul is kept alive, and because the soul is alive, the body is alive. But once the spirit goes, the body has nothing to keep it alive. It activated the soul mind to, in, in Genesis 2-7. And we see that activation of the soul activated the body, but it was only through the spirit of God in man or the spirit of man. Okay, that, that's a lot. I don't, I'm, I'm trying not to rehash too much. Uh, let's go, please continue. Original contraception spiritual, but why? There is a lot of controversy surrounding conception and human procreation. Religion has taken the scripture Genesis 127 through 28 is an absolute command. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him, male and female created he them. And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply, and replenish the earth and subdue it. 
definition of contraception. Deliberate prevention of conception or impregnation. Any, uh, many treat contraception as evil and something from the devil, but it is not from the devil at all. What's the ultimate purpose of contraception? Simply to prevent union, oneness, and new identity. The process works both biologically and spiritually as well. God is author of both biological and spiritual conception and contraception. Why? Because the Father's purpose, intent, and plan for spiritually birthed sons requires the introduction of both. Before the foundations of creation, his PIP called for four kinds of creations, angels, men, animals, and new creation sons. Let's look at how and why he used conception and contraception. Here are just a few verses. Okay, let, let's, uh, let, 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 we're not going to do, we're not going to do this part. It's just, it's, 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 it. I think you'll get it. I need you to go back there, please, Jim, for just a minute. Uh, down, back down. Yeah. We're not going to look at animals, although it talks about animals in Genesis 1, 21 to 24 and 25. I'm not going to go all, keep going, please, Jim. Uh, I'm not going to go over angels. There's a whole bunch of good verses uh, about angels and God created. Angels, uh, we'll, well, we'll discuss that in a minute. Well, I'll discuss now. Angels do not procreate. Angels were created with the inability for conception or contraception. They, are, they, <laughs> they have contraception built into their makeup. God made it so that they can't reproduce. And there's a reason for that. Uh, pause right there. This I put this. Why did I put this? I put a little star by this. That means I wanted to, to use this as a verse. Oh, yes, yes. Innumerable uh, in Hebrews 12, 22. I, uh, I'm wanting that one because an, an innumerable company of angels. Uh, keep going, Jim. And I'll put another one in here later on. Yeah, that was Revelations 5. Hold on. Revelations 5, 12. And I beheld and heard the voice of many angels around about the throne and of the beasts and of the elders, and the number of them was 10,000 upon 10,000 upon thousands and thousands. What did they tell you? What, what John was seeing was he saw angels that he could not count. Now, I want to say this to you. Angels, I just said, angels do not reproduce because when God created angels, he created them as a whole. They don't reproduce. That's why angels can't understand, some of them can't understand our salvation, how God does what he does. Uh, Lucifer, on the other hand, understood what God was going to do with us. That's why human beings are hated. Everybody, some in religion say God hates Christians. That's a lie. He hates every human being because of the destiny that God gave every human being the right to have as a birth son spiritually to sit uh, with him. So, Let's go to the next one, please, Jim. Uh, man, male and female. And we just discussed this verse. Keep going. Uh, okay, right there. Out of all his creation, God has only one creature in which contraception and conception is determined by him. Now, you would think, and I, I, we talked about male and female. You would think, when I said that, thank you very much for doing that. You would think contraception and conception was determined by him. Let me, let me say it this way. God determines contraception before when he created us. What do you mean by that? You cannot get pregnant unless you have ovulation. Now, women ovulate a certain period of time, and after that period of time, they don't ovulate anymore. Men have sperm or seed throughout their whole, t the whole time they were born. They, they, they don't make, they, they keep producing seed. But ovums are important because it's the ovum that receives the seed. It is the ovum that receives the, the life of another and becomes one with that person, and that person then produces a new creation. So when I put this in here, I wanted you to <laughs> – it it's all spiritual. But I wanted you to see God has one creature, which is man, that, which has contraception, and conception, which is determined by him, which means contraception is you, unless a female ovulates, 
we see that, and I don't think, I don't know if I put it in here or not. I think I did in the notes farther down. We see how it operates at its perfection in Luke chapter 1, coming to Mary. Mary is in contraception until she's able to produce an ovum. So when, when Gabriel showed up, Mary was about to leave contraception and about to produce an ovum so that she can conceive. But that has, a, that has a spiritual significance in it. That's why we divide soul and spirit. It has a spiritual significance in it, which we will get to here in a few minutes. I trust the Father to do that. So I want you to know, human beings are built with contraception built in. You, you, woman can't produce an ovum until it's time. Men, on the other hand, produce sperm their whole life. At a certain time, that part ends, ovulation ends, and therefore contraception begins again. You follow? Without, you need both. Anytime there's a separation that you don't have a sperm and an ovum, you don't have conception. Just that simple. Which, (laughs) I'm hoping that Curtis won't take off on me on this. (laughs) From the day of the cross, men the, o- the, sper- uh, the spirit of man, which is the ovum of man, were now available for conception. When the rapture takes place, we go into menopause. We go into menopause. We don't, we, you, there won't be anybody conceiving. There won't be anybody that's spiritually conceived anymore. It's, it's done. So, again, that's just a part of this whole idea of the depth. Curtis and I was talking about this recently. Recently, We talked about it before. But there is no other parallel that parallels spiritual birth other than biological birth. The parallels God gave us with those two. I've been using examples and things for many, many years. And I found that somewhere along the line, some of these examples we use break down. But Curtis, do you think, uh, no, I know you already know this. I'm just, this is rhetorical. But do you think there's somewhere in biological birth that breaks down when we use an example with spiritual birth? No. No, it doesn't. We we saw this several years back. That that, that is the only one that really does not break down as an example that the father uses as spiritual birth. Okay, let's keep going. New creation man is the spiritual son. That creature is man, and it is the spirit of man in which a new creation can come forth. Since the beginning of man's creation, when God breathed the breath of life into his body and soul, man was in spiritual contraception. The spirit of man was incapable of receiving union with anyone outside man himself. The way to spiritual conception was closed until the appointed time of the Father. Hebrews says this, Hebrews 9, 6 through 9. Now when these things have been so prepared, the priests are continually entering the outer tabernacle, performing the divine worship. But into the second went the high priest, alone once every year, not without blood, which he offered for himself and for the heirs of the people. The Holy Spirit is signifying this, that the way into the holy place has not yet been disclosed while the outer tabernacle is still standing. Woo, that's good. Hang on. Let me, I got I to gotta, I gotta talk about this. this. This is just, you know how long I've read this verse? How many years I've read this verse and not saw, thank you, Jim, thank you. How many years I've read this verse and not saw this till, till the last three, three, at least three, four weeks? And I know you see it. Some of you see this. It says that the Holy Spirit signifying that the way into the holy place has been closed, has, has not been disclosed while the outer tabernacle is still staying. It had not yet been disclosed. Paul said this in Philippians, Ephesians chapter 3. For it was hidden from ages and generation. What was hidden? That God planned the birth, put his spirit in the spirit of man, because that had not been disclosed. 
No one knew about birthing. No one knew about spiritual birth. No one knew that the human spirit was given to man for the specific purpose as a holy place, a place set apart in man that only God could enter himself. Think about that. How long did we sit in churches? How long did we sit on the ministries? How long did we sit in these places and have this not disclosed to us? But he says, while the outer tabernacle is still standing, when one died, who, how many died, Curtis? All. How many died, Jimmy? All. The outer tabernacle was done away. At that moment, the way of the holy place was open. And the holy place within you is a spirit of man. It could begin to receive seed for conception of the Son of God. Oh. First time, resurrection morning. You think the resurrection all it had to do with sin and all of that? You missed it. It was hidden that on a resurrection morning, every human being was now ovulating. Every human being was ovum, spiritual ovum, was now available for fertilization. Every human being. Now, one died, all died, which means every ovum was now available for spiritual conception. And you know something about the, the, the do you know something about the, the, oh, the, the spirit of man? It's not black, it's not white, it's not male, it's not female. It is none of that. Because the conception that comes out of that ovum birthed the spiritual son. Sons in many, but the son of God as you. I love this verse. I read this verse for years and never saw that. And the high priest, we know that's Jesus. He says, and the high priest alone once a year at Pentecost, but not without blood. Whose blood? His blood? Was it his blood? It's the blood of every human being on the planet. Every human being that was is at the time and is to come. He offered for himself and for the heirs of humanity. All right. Whew. Please. Oh, Lord. Let's, let's go, please. I got to go. We are looking at the mystery of the first and last Adam. Paul gave us a look at this mystery. 1 Corinthians 15, 45 and 47. And so it is written... The first man, Adam, was made a living soul. The last Adam was made a quickening spirit. The first man is of the earth, earthy. The second man is the Lord of, from heaven. We'll review this in detail later. There are several differences between the first Adam and the last Adam. The most important is contraception and conception. A quick review of Luke chapter 1 might help us see this God idea at work. Let me be clear. Ovulation is the first step to conception. Contraception is built into man in Genesis 1, 20, 28 and 2 and 7. Luke 1, 31 through 32 and 35. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son and shalt call his name Jesus. He shall be great and shall be called the son of the highest and the Lord of God. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. Then said Mary unto the angel, how shall this be seeing I know not a man? And the angel answered and said to her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing that shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. Okay, pause. That's, that's good. Okay, I'm not going to rehearse this one too much. We've, we've been over this verse uh, uh, more than once. Uh, for many of you, some of you may not have heard it. Uh, 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 uh. So I will make it just, uh, I'll try to do it as quickly as possible. 
Mary is between the age of 12 and 17. Many theologians say she's between the ages of 12 and, and, and 17 or 18. Uh, right now, she's a virgin. But at this very moment, let me tell you about Mary's body. The body she's in is from, goes all the way back to Adam through David. She is in the lineage of David, which goes back to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, which goes back to Adam, which goes back to uh, uh, Eve. So this woman is in the lineage of David. All 23 of her uh, 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 chromosomes, her DNA profile, her 23, inside her body is in this ovum which she has not obviated. She's at a, a time in life, whether it's 12, 13, 14, I don't know. The, no one really knows the exact age. But whatever it is, she has not ovulated yet. She is about to pass her first ovum. She's about to pass her first 23. She's about to give up something that God told uh, uh, David back in uh, first, first Samuel chapter 7. I think it's in First Chronicles 14 or First Chronicles 28. I can't remember which one it was. But God promised that David wanted to build God a house. As you know, God said, don't make me a house. You can't build me a house. I got a better idea. I started it back in Genesis 2, 7. I got my own house ready. I've got my own house ready. But it's going to come from you. Mary is about to ovulate. God sent the angel Gabriel to say, okay, it's time. It's time that I bring forth my son. It's time, as John said in John 1, 14, and the word was made flesh. Here we are. God's about to fill his promise. He's about to fulfill his promise to David, and he's about to fulfill his promise, a, a pro prophetic word that he gave before the foundation of the world. He's about to put all humanity in this, in this young woman. What happens Gabriel says, Mary knows enough to know she cannot get pregnant without a man. Now, we don't, we don't hear her say anything about ovulation, but she's still a virgin and she's still pure. And I'm saying to you that she understood pregnancy came from having a male seed. Gabriel says, the Holy Ghost shall come upon thee. That's what happened to any human being that receives Christ. The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee and the power of the highest. Now let me show you something. Jim, scroll back up there for just a minute. That's the one I want right there. Thank you. You see where it says, and you shall call his name Jesus, and he shall be great and shall be called the Son of the highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. Well, if he's the son of the highest, how in the world can he have sit on the throne of his father? What father is he talking about? He's talking about the body he lives in. Go back down, please. The son of the highest. Here he is again. The Holy Ghost shall come up and the power of the highest or the power of the father shall overshadow thee. And therefore, therefore also the holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the son of of God. He said the Holy Ghost shall come upon you and give you 23 more that's going to create that's going to create oneness between man and the highest. And what's going to come out of this is a new type of creation, a new type of human, a new type of person that has never been on the planet before. One that's a tripartite being, but in spirit Remember, remember this, too. As a tripartite human being, when you have your children, you give your children a body, a soul, and a spirit. Their biological identity is different. DNA is, identity, is different than you as a parent. But guess what? Their soul mind is completely unique in their makeup. But the spirit you give them is the same. We only can give it because God gave it to us, and that's all we can do is give it to one another. But in this case, what was Mary's in spirit goes back to Genesis 2-7. God put it there, and right now he's activating contraception. He took the 23 was in her from all the way back 
to Adam. And now he is fertilizing that ovum. Those two, there was union, and then there was oneness. And Gabriel said, and he shall be called the son of God. That is the same thing that happens to each and every one of us that are birthed by him. We're not Christ. Let me say it again. We're not Christ. We're not Jesus. He's gone. What, Christ, what did Christ give us? What do you give your children when you conceive them? You give them part of your makeup. Right? You give them part of it. Not all of it. You give them part of it. The 23 that you are. But the other 23 changes the makeup of that child. And they're their own person. Just like we are. So what did Christ give us? The life of conception. There's a lot to this. I won't go into that uh, because that's another, that's another uh, teaching. But let's, let's move on. Thank you for, for staying with me. Uh, let's skip these verses. Uh, uh, read this one, please. Uh, Ecclesiastes 3, 20, 21, and Ecclesiastes 3, uh, 12, and 7. Uh, Ecclesiastes 3, 20 to 21, all go unto one place. Now, that's all, all. all. Men animals, you name it, on the earth. Anything that's created in third dimension has a place. Read what it says. All are of the dust, and all turn to dust again. Who knoweth the spirit of man that goeth upward, and the spirit of the beast that goeth downward to the earth? That means what the, the, your, your goldfish, your, 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 your favorite kitty cat, your favorite raccoon, your favorite uh, chipmunk, whatever it is, it says here, it goes downward to the earth. Now, if God got some of those things up there for you so you can play with it when you get to heaven, to the Father's house, okay. But that's not what it says. Matter of fact, it says all go back to the dust. There's nobody that... <laughs> No, keep going. Ecclesiastes 12, 7. Then shall the dust return to the earth as it was, and the spirit shall return unto God who gave it. Now, I remember three years ago, Curtis and I was talking about this verse. Curtis brought that to my attention. I mean, I read that verse a long time, but Curtis has some, a good little word when we were sitting at that, that, uh, the, 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 the bulls pen one day years ago. He brought this verse up. I went back and looked at this verse, and his father gave me a good word back then. And it has grown since the day I received that from, from Curtis. This is a powerful verse. You don't know how powerful this verse is. Maybe you do. If you do, you couldn't go to bed the same way you wake up. Keep going. Uh, let's skip this one. How about 1 Corinthians 2.11? Yeah, let's read 1 Corinthians 2.11. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of man which is in him? Even so, the things of God knoweth no man but the spirit of God. So, by your spirit, the spirit of man... You don't know the things of God. It's only by the Spirit of God that we know the things of God that he reveals to us by his Spirit. That's the verse before that, after that. Let's go. Conclusion. The significance of the Spirit of man is the difference between life and death to the body-soul identity. The Spirit of man is the only means that anyone can fulfill their personal destiny and deepest need. Both are spiritual. Nothing can complete the heart and soul of man except when the spirit of man becomes one with the spirit of God who gave it. James 2.26, For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. Uh, 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 <laughs> like I said, this verse has been used by many people, and they usually get stuck with, so faith without works is dead. Now, everybody want to go right on to explaining faith without works. But James, like I said, I don't, I don't know. Uh, he used this, and it could have been uh, something the, the Spirit g gave him to say. And he was, because he was talking, if you go back in, in, in verse 19 and 20 and 21, he's talking about those kind of things of faith and works. Uh, whether he grabbed it, whether this was given to him or not, I don't know. But I know when I, when I read this, 
uh, last week, this verse came to mind. And for as the body without the spirit, what spirit? Not the spirit of God. This is the spirit of man. This is the spirit we have when we're born into this planet. My, my five-month-old grandson has his own little, little spirit. I say little only because he's in a small body. But as he grows, the spirit's not going to grow him. It's just going to be the same spirit. So the, for the body without the spirit is dead. What's alive? The soul. It, 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 God gave it. It energizes the soul. It activated the soul. As a matter of fact, I think I was talking to, to uh, Jimmy this week. And I, I, either Jimmy or, or Mark over in Australia. But I use this as an example. <clears throat> Your body is the house. Uh, it, it, you got a house, you got solar panels, and you got the sun. As long as the sun is shining on the solar panels, it charges the batteries that brings electricity to the house. But when the sun stops shining, guess what happens? The house that you're living in has no electricity. Anyway, guys, I want to thank you again for this week, uh, for staying with us. Uh, Next week, I can almost assure you, at least I'm pretty sure I can, we will finish this part with part six, and we're going to look at the Word of God, which really divides what happening in your soul and what happens in your spirit. And that's not the words on a page called the Bible. With that said, guys, thank you. Appreciate you. Love you all. Trust the Father. See you next week. Have a great week in being and learning, struggling, I hope, with who you are in Christ as the Son of God, spiritually as you.